Hello and welcome to this episode. Today we're going to talk about why doctors are so dismissive with regards to myalgic encephalomyelitis or neurotoxic encephalopathy. Um, myalgic encephalitis, as it's kind of known as ME-CFS. You know, a lot of us, we go to the neurologist and the neurologist just kind of shakes their head, yeah, 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 whatever. Gives us 10 minutes of their precious time, sends us on our way, and then when we look at their notes, it says conversion disorder, somatic condition, uh, chronic pain syndrome, all that good stuff. And they really don't need to ever see you again. You know, you spent six months, you've made appointments, maybe in many cases, like myself, you've had to travel quite a distance to get there. And you walk in, and as soon as you walk in, they've already, their body language really says to you, they've already decided what's wrong with you long before you even showed up. And they've only seen you, this is the first time they've ever seen you. So they go through their little pinprick test, and, you know, and then they decide after about 10 minutes, yeah, it's exactly what they thought it was. And pretty much they walk into the door and have a good day. And what they basically have done is they've written you off as having conversion disorder. They've written you off as having chronic pain syndrome, sodomatic conditions. A sodomatic condition is one that is caused when you have a psychological issue that manifests itself in a physical-like symptom. And a lot of people have this. A lot of people develop... And just general life, it has nothing to do with MECFS or neurotoxic encephalopathy. I mean, there are people that don't want to go work that day. You know, they're having a problem at work that day. And they get a headache or they get a migraine. And I would apologize for my dog barking in the back room. And they manifest this condition into a day off. That is a somatic condition. And that is one where a psychological issue has manifested itself in such a way that it has become a physical condition. Okay. That is a very real problem, and that is seen a lot by neurologists. And there's a lot of people with chronic conditions. Even if you have a, an actual chronic condition, like you know rheumatoid arthritis or whatever, Many times a person with a chronic condition that is actually physical will also have, in addition, somatic conditions. Um, and the doctor will oftentimes just, like I said, dismiss it, send you on your way. Well, the problem with this is, in many cases, people are going to neurologists and they are being honest with them. And the doctor is dismissing them from day from the moment they walked in the door. And then the patient is left dangling, completely untouched by medical assistance. So why would a doctor want to dismiss a patient who has a neurological condition? Well, there's several reasons. The main one is a somatic condition. But the other one is myalgic encephalomyelitis. It's not a condition. It's about to change. But up until now, it's not really been a condition that neurologists are able to bill for. And that's been a big problem. There's a lot of billable issues. You know, that's really probably the main reason, or that's not the main reason, but that's a large reason. They can't go in and type in, you know, when it comes to billing for your appointment to Medicare, Medicaid, you know, your insurance company, there's not a lot of options for them to enter. You know, if you have MS, for example, there's tons of things they can enter. But because MECFS, neurotoxic encephalopathy, is so often misdiagnosed as a somatic condition, that's a psychological condition, 
it really limits what the neurologist can do in terms of being paid. Now, the other problem, and this is the biggest problem, when a neurologist has misdiagnosed you, they would then have to turn around and acknowledge they made a mistake. And one thing you'll notice about neurologists, neurologists protect neurologists. This is why if you ask for a different opinion from someone else, the neurologist who you're now seeing is going to read past neurologist notes. And in almost every case, they're going to agree with a previous neurologist. And that's why when you walk into their room, they are so dismissive to begin with because you've already been labeled, diagnosed as having conversion disorder, somatic conditions, and you know, or chronic pain, or you're looking for drugs, or they just, you know, we saw this with the NFL um, neurologists. When the players were developing concussion symptoms, physical symptoms, the neurologists were just so dismissive. And it didn't matter where you were. You could be in Seattle, you could be in Tampa, you could be in Los Angeles, you could be in New York. Same treatment every time. The best, ex, the best neurologist money could buy when it comes to the NFL always saw the same thing and they saw nothing. They never threw their buddies under the bus. So this is a ongoing problem. Are we going to see this change now with long COVID? A lot of these doctors are, you know, whether it's long COVID, MECFS, neurotoxic encephalopathy, a lot of the doctors are not going to change their opinions. You know, that was some that kind of surprised people when the NFL was proven, when CTE was validated with medical evidence, imaging, uh, physical evidence. The, the neurologist who dismissed what was actually going on to this day continue to dismiss the accuracy of CTE. The leading neurologist for the NFL to this day remain defiant to what Dr. Ben Amalu proved. And for people that know who Ben Amalu is, he is the doctor that discovered CTE and showed, used his own money to prove. But when he went to show this to the NFL, they covered it up. Why nobody went to jail, I don't know. Ask your U.S. Senators. Because somebody should have gone to jail. But it was a complete and utter cover-up. Nobody was held accountable, really. I mean, financially, there were some fines that had to be paid, and there was some money that had to be allotted. But nobody got their ass handed to them like they should have, because people died. But that's the biggest problem, is even if we get rock-solid proof of this condition. And actually, I've, I've, in some of my previous videos, showed that this is doable. The doctors simply have to take the information and set it aside and not look at it. You know, I can't tell you how many people, and I've done this myself, you bring them information and they, oh, yeah, 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 and they look at it for two, and they throw it away right in front of you. Well, you know, as somebody who has confirmed mitochondrial disease, when I bring that into the, into the equation, the doctors that have been dismissive, guess what they do? They dismiss it. Because that would acknowledge they were in fact wrong. I'm sorry, they, they have to ignore, they dismiss it because if they don't, then they would have to wind up saying, you know what, maybe we got this wrong. In my 50 plus years on this planet, I've only had a handful of doctors actually acknowledge a mistake. And there's been a lot of mistakes. But that is really the 
the primary reason why, regardless of how honest you're being with a doctor, you're being um, not given a fair shake because you're identifying yourself as having this condition. I always tell people, get the term, my odds, you know, ME-CFS out of your vocabulary. I always tell people, get the term fatigue out of your vocabulary. These are red flags. You know, never use the term, it hurts all over. That is a, that is one of the leading red flags for chronic pain syndrome. And chronic, and I will put the definitions on the link here of what is chronic pain syndrome, what is somatic disorders. And I I have one out there somewhere I've already shown. Um, So you can look at what the definitions are and what's more, look at somatic conditions and how the treatment's supposed to be dealt with. And one of the thing, one of the treatments for myalgic encephalomyelitis, because Mayo Clinic recognizes it, regardless of what ME Action is saying, they still recognize it as a mental health condition. Therefore, it's a somatic condition. And so many of these doctors are going to defer to what Mayo is saying. And like I said, even if we can come up with a definite biomarker or whatever, the doctors that were willfully dismissive are going to remain dismissive because doing otherwise, they would be having to acknowledge, hey, maybe I made a mistake. And neurologists don't ever make mistakes. Just ask them. And they're going to cover for their buddies. They're going to cover for themselves. And this is why law needs to be made that protects the patient from the doctor. Because what's happening in neurologists' office throughout this country is criminal. Just like we saw with CTE, just like we saw with Gulf War illness, just like we saw with multiple conditions. When the neurologist says something, that is God speaking. Every doctor below a neurologist is going to submit to what God says. Problem is God's been wrong on this condition many, many times. And the evidence exists that what they've done is no less criminal than what the NFL neurologists did when it came to CTE. They won't assume me I'm right here. They know who I am. I'm not hiding. My face is right here. Facial recognition, not hard to do. But until things change, until laws are passed that protect the patient from the abuser, nothing will change. Okay. Until next time, remember, don't ever believe what this idiot or moron on the internet tells you. Everything I tell you can be validated. But it's you, the individual with a condition, who has to research and study the information you're provided and validate the information for yourself. Trust your instincts. Nobody in this world is going to protect you but you. And when you have a mystery medical condition like this, you're screwed. I'm sorry. Truth sucks. Till next time, be careful. Thank you.